Hey everyone, it is Michelle Alexandria coming at you with a look at CES. CES is coming up next week. Uh, Jan starts Jan the week of January 7th. And that is when we're going to find out when all the latest and greatest TV tech is going to come out. And I was actually planning on attending, but some things came up in the last few weeks. And now that I can't go, I'm so upset. I'm actually not upset. But... I did, did want to make a trying off and return to CES next week, but I can't. Um, one of the things that fr that's frustrating about CES is I, I used to go every year for eight or nine years because I used to actually write for the Washington Post and UPI. I used to cover technology. And again, I would never claim to be a professional. You know, let's make that perfectly clear, even though I did get paid to cover the show and do a lot of really cool stuff back in the day as a freelancer. But the one frustrating thing about CES that always drove me nuts is you'd always see all this technology that would never cut, that would either turn out to be vaporware or come out like 10 years later. And it's annoying. And then you have to hear about it. For, and this was before the internet, so it wasn't as bad as it is now. Now all I hear about is people talking about micro LED in HDMI 2.1 like they're going to be the second coming and they're coming next year. And I'm like, don't get your hopes up, people. HDMI 2.0 probably would not, I would be shocked. I won't say I would be shocked, but I would be shocked if HDMI 2.1 TV sets came out this year. There's no, there's simply no technology that takes advantage of HDMI 2.1. And as far as micro LED, I think that te uh, technology is still a few years away. And when it comes out, it's going to be as expensive as heck. So I won't be surprised if Samsung announces a micro LED TV that's available this year. But I will be shocked if there's a micro LED TV that's available for under $2,500 or $3,000 this year. And I will be shocked if a micro LED TV is available for under $3,000 and next year. I think that technology probably won't hit the street until 2021 and won't be affordable probably till like 2024 20, or something. Um, so I'm not holding my breath on that. I, I'm curious about it. I want to see it. I want to see reviews on it and see how good it is. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. This video is actually just let's talk about the future. What do we what do you guys want to see from new TV manufacturers this year? You know, stuff that's actually going to be reasonable, reasonable requests that you would actually like to see. I'm going to give you my list of things I would like to see, and I would just like to find out from you guys, you know, what kind of things you would like to see. I'm going to start off with LG, with LG and OLED TVs, because everyone here knows I love OLED TVs. And a few things I would really like to see LG do is... Well, I love OLED TVs. I do, and I don't have much problems with, with the brightness levels on my TV. I would still like to see the C9, the 2018, 2019 range of OLED TVs increase the brightness. Right now, those T 2018 models apparently can get up to 800 nits, and my 7, 2017 B7 supposedly can get up to 700 nits. What I would really like to see is OLED be able to get up to night over a thousand nits or 1200 nits of brightness as a consistent thing. That would be pretty awesome. I want them to implement war tools to mitigate burning. They started that a little bit last year where basically what they did was, you know, they added this automatic brightness limiter thing for their static images, images. So it automatically dims static images. I don't know how well that works because I don't have a C8. But I would like them to continue to improve on that technology and come up with even more tools that limit burning. So those are the main two issues I want OLED to, I want this year's OLEDs to kind of focus on limiting burning and also increasing the brightness levels on the TVs. That that and maybe even and it's a simple thing, officially add burning coverage to their standard warranty and increase the warranty from one year to three or four years. These are simple fixes they can do that wouldn't that wouldn't that would go a long way towards making people a little more comfortable with the technology. Maybe I mean they can't promise that burning would never happen and they can't 
completely change the production processes, but they could implement more tools to limit it and more cleaning tools. Uh, they can actually go through and increase their warranty and make sure it covers burn-in. They make people feel more comfortable, and I don't see why they couldn't increase their brightness levels. They've been doing it every single year, and it's now up to 800, so 800 nits. So there's no reason why they can't push it to 1,000 at minimum. That's only in 200 more nits that you need to push. So And make it cheaper out of the box. Like when when the 55C9 comes out, it shouldn't be $2,500 at this point. The 59 the 59, the 55 inch C9 should hit the streets at around $1,800, I think. Um, now that now that we know the seat, you can get the C8 and all these other OLEDs for around $1,500 right now. There's no reason the C9 should be that cheaper. So for TCL, as I said before, I love my TCL R617, but I'm sending it back next week simply because I want the 29. 19 model and what I want are the models that they are selling in Europe right now. I haven't seen any I haven't seen any reviews on a European model QLED TCL QLED models, but man do those things look beautiful. I mean they look awesome. They have a slick design. They have slick built-in sound bars and QLED and I'm assuming the brightness would be better. So I want those models I want improved 26, 2019 versions of those TVs to come out in America. So I want TCL to actually officially bring out a QLED TV in America. And I wonder if the reason why they don't is because of some deal with Samsung. Because I love QLED technology. I think QLED technology is great. And I think QLED technology with Dolby Vision, you combine that brightness and everything and backlighting with actual Dolby Vision content, you know, on-chip Dolby Vision content, and I think you'll probably have a winner in terms of HDR. And and I want I want them to add one more HDMI port to their TV. So I want their TVs to go from three HDMI ports to four proper full-fledged HDR ports and, and maintain their pricing. So keep the 65-inch QLED at like 15... $1,500 to $1,900 if you can, and make a 55-inch version of that TV that stays in the same like pricing price range as their last two uh, TVs. So, uh, so maybe get a QLED TV, 55-inch QLED TV for about $800. That would be amazing if TCL could pull that trick off. Vizio. I don't have much. The the main thing I want to the main thing about Vizio is I want their TVs to actually be available. I want to be able to walk into a store, see them on display, and be able to buy the damn thing. On paper, the Quantum, the P-Series Quantum TV was my dream TV. Unfortunately, I couldn't find it. I couldn't find the TV anywhere, and I couldn't find, I couldn't walk into a store and actually see the TV in action, and it was sold out all freaking year, and the pricing was all over the place. The TV retails for 20 for two thousand dollars, but it was on sale a few times for fourteen hundred dollars. Once that happens, why would I want to buy a TV at buy that TV at a full price of two thousand dollars? That's just stupid. There's a difference between thinking you're being ripped off and knowing for a fact you're being ripped off. So even if I could walk into a store today and buy that TV for two thousand dollars, I never would because I know it has it's been on sale for fourteen hundred dollars and that. You know, at some point, it'll probably go back on sale for $1,400. There's absolutely no incentive to buy the Vizio P-Series Quantum TV, even though, on paper, it's kind of my dream TV. Um, and then the other th the other issue with Vizio TVs is their, their UI is still horrible, and it still relies on, cat crunk, on using Android, Chrome, Google Chromecast, to get all your apps. And I just think that's unacceptable. I want apps on the TV. I don't want to have to break out my phone and use it as a tablet and a remote control. So I want Vizio to come out with a brand new, with a brand new interface or have all their apps on TV. It's ridiculous that they actually 
release a press release anytime a new t a new app comes to their TV. Oh no! Look at this. YouTube is now available as a on platform app. I'm like, really? You need to do a press release about that. So yeah, for Vizio, the only thing they need to do, I think, for 2019 is improve their manufacturing processes and production lines and make sure the TVs actually hit the, hit the store shelves and keep their pricing in a reasonable check, reasonable, and don't do these dumb $800, $800 $900 off deals every couple of months because it, it disincentivizes people from buying your product if they know that it's going to go on sale in like four or five months for like $800 off. And, and and fits their UI. Sony, 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 Sony. My next my next LCD TV, if it's not Vizio, maybe a Sony TV. But Sony needs to do a couple of things. Sony needs to offer full 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 bandwidth ports. None of the stop doing this crappy thing where you claim you have four HDMI ports, but only two of them support. HDR and only one of them, and actually it's only one when you consider the other port is HDMI ARC. Give us four full fat bandwidth ports that support HDR. Is that why is this so hard for Sony? Sony has been doing this crap for the last three years now. Also, have Dolby Vision available on chip, not your crappy software versions, but on chip Dolby Vision ready to go outside of the box. Don't give us new TVs in 2019 and tell us that, oh no, oh no, you can't, we'll give you Dolby Vision nine months later. No, have that stuff ready out of the box. Uh, the other thing Sony needs to do is do something about their Android operating system because their Android TV platform is garbage. It's buggy. I, I had it. I had the Sony 900E a few years ago, and it's garbage. It's buggy. It's slow. Um, it has a really confused UI that doesn't work well with Sony's UI. So you're looking at two U different UIs for your settings between your Android settings and Android TV settings and your TV settings. Sony needs to blend that into one workable UI, one workable skin, one fast, stable skin to power your TV. Because for me, a TV is more than just about picture quality. It's about the overall package and overall experience of using it. And I would get a Sony TV simply because everything else in my entertainment stack is Sony. I have a Sony uh, Blue UHD player. I have a Sony soundbar. I have a PlayStation 4, and I'm going to have a PlayStation 5. My video camera, my ca video cam for this is Sony. So I would like to have a Sony TV to kind of so that everything works together. And I would love them to get rid of that the dump the remote control, they come up with something better. They've been using the same, that same crappy remote for five years now, it seems like. I want them to come up with a better remote. So for Sony, the improvements I want to see are 4.4 bandwidth HDMI ports, Dolby Vision support right out of the box, a better, cleaner, faster UI, and that's it. I mean... From a picture quality point of view, I don't really have an issue with Sony with Sony PQ. It's everything else that surrounds the TV. Samsung, Samsung. What can I say about Samsung? I actually really do love Samsung TVs. I've always loved Samsung TVs. I love the Tencent platform. I love the remote. My issue with Samsung TVs is I hate the way they implement HDR. Whenever they implement like, I'm having a good old time watching Samsung. Like, I've owned five Samsung TVs in the last year and a half. And the problem is the way it implements HDR. Whenever HDR turns on, it just looks like someone shined their light behind the picture. And there's this weird tint on top of everything. And it just, I think Samsung does a horrible, horrible job implementing HDR. And yeah, Samsung's nit brightness is, is legendary, but... I don't like it. I just think the brightness makes everything less wa washed out to me. So I wish they had better color controls when the brightness turns on. And I don't know why people are so accepting of the fact that Samsung t Samsung won't get on a Dolby Vision bandwagon. Dolby Vision is is now has now become the de facto standard a little bit. 
And Dolby Vision is superior to HDR, to regular HDR, and, and creating a brand new format, HDR 10 Plus, is just stupid, and Samsung being obstinate. It's actually, if TCL and other low, quote-unquote, cheap brands, like Element, Elements, Hisense, etc., can implement Dolby Vision, there's no reason for Samsung not to implement Dolby Vision. I mean, there just isn't. And Dolby Vision would look amazing on the Samsung TV when you have, when you factor in the peak brightness and color controls and you add in dynamic metadata for a, for Dolby Vision. It, it would probably be a pretty amazing experience, but we can't get that because Samsung are just being douchebags. I also don't like Samsung's marketing and the way they market stuff, and I don't like their pricing. Their pricing is ridiculously expensive for what what they give you. Um, but on an overall package standpoint, there's not much Samsung needs to change on their TVs other than adding Dolby Vision, because I do like the fact that they include full, full, full bandwidth, full, four bandwidth, four full bandwidth ports, and I also love the fact that they, um, I love their breakout box, but Again, this year, they kind of ruined the whole breakout box by making it available only on the Q9, which is the, uh, which is ridiculously expensive, in the Q6. But what about the Q8? There's no breakout box for the Q8. And I would wish they'd get rid of the butterfly stands as well, because I want to I want to have the option to have, like, regular center stands. Butterfly stands draw me nuts, because in order to use a butterfly stand, you have to all of a sudden have a 65-inch uh, base or whatever. Um, and I think that's kind of ridiculous. So anyway, Samsung, great TVs, great hardware, love their remote, love their platform. My only major complaint about Samsung TVs is the lack of Dolby Vision support. Um, and the fact that it's outrageously overpriced in the marketing. If they could just get their pricing under control and bring back the breakout boxes to all their QLED lineup, I think they would be... They would, they would be a, this would be another great year for Samsung TVs. So anyway, based on everything I've said, what do you guys want to see? And let's be reasonable. Don't, don't mention you want to see 8K TVs for $2,000 or HDMI 2.1 for like $1,500 because that's just not happening this year. I, I, I want you guys to be realistic. What, how can these TVs improve for 2019? I think we can all agree that 2018 was the last of the year. So let's bring on 2019, and CES is coming up next week, baby. And don't expect much news. We'll see the new TVs, but they won't tell us the pricing or release dates. That's just how CES is. But I'm, I'm just curious to see what kind of, how you guys think all these different TV manufacturers can improve. So talk to you guys later. Bye.